So I do agree with you guys that we've mostly focused on American punk rock bands here on the channel lately, so we're gonna go overseas and check out a key band from the original wave of British punk rock, and that is The Clash. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to Lone University. I am familiar with the band The Clash and I've heard a few of their songs, but it's never a band I deliberately listen to. I've heard Should I Stay or Should I Go, London Calling, maybe a couple others, but I've seen a lot of requests for Lost in the Supermarket, which is from the band's third studio album, London Calling, released in 1979. So I'm gonna hear this track for the first time. I'm excited to maybe check out the stylistic differences between British punk rock, American punk rock, and maybe see what's evident, but I'm reading a cool fact here that their drummer Topper used a tom on this song instead of a snare drum after seeing Taj Mahal's drummer doing the same thing in a concert the night before the recording. So interested to kind of pay attention to that as well. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Lost in the Supermarket by The Clash. <laughs> mm, such a warm, sounds like P-Bass to me. I brought it out just in case. <laughs> Ooh, atmospheric, really moody. Let me hear that intro right here. love how those kind of gallops, I'm assuming, are picked. I can kind of hear that attack since the bass is a little more exposed here in the intro than some other songs. Sometimes it's just hard to tell. But I love how those gallops are played really soft. You know, it's not like a maiden, like, dun dig dun dig where you really hear the separation of the rhythms. It's just kind of a, a sizzling. And I love that it adds kind of a wit to the hi-hats doing it. And that's just a cool kind of orchestration. You have these hi-hats with the bass kind of sizzling. You're kind of matching the tone of the hi-hat and the pick attack. And then you've got the kick drum and the bass kind of over here giving it a big depth. And there's kind of some chimey cleans going on. Really good setup. Let's keep going. E. Maybe I gotta turn my tone knob down a little. Definitely sounds like a Tom. That's that's interesting. Okay. I love the space he puts in those notes. And that is such just a, a seasoned thing to do as a bass player. And how effective that is really depends on the rest of the composition, mainly what the drums are doing. But you can kind of hear that, you know, you could easily play this groove kind of going up and down a chord, root, fifth, octave. but he's adding a lot of space. You'll notice that he lifts off of a note and adds the space and just gives a little gap for the snare to come in. And that is a huge way of adding some space in the rhythm section and giving it a really directional bouncy feel. Snare, snare. I can't, I can't say it at the same time. The snares are kind of going in those little spaces there versus just keeping it more straight. Yeah, this is more of a, this doesn't sound like a tone wide open thing here. I've kind of got my tone rolled back. Has all the elements of a P bass sound, but just really warm and a little subdued on the highs. Let's go back here. You kind of hear those little spaces. I like that. Dang it again, a little kind of diddle there. I think I heard. This Tom thing is pretty cool, pretty unique thing. That Tom, you know, I'm not going to comment on the drums a ton. Sometimes I do, but I like that it, you know, like in a pre-chorus, drummers can go to the Toms and kind of start a build. 
what it does is it kind of gives that rhythm section a constant building feel like it like it hasn't hit and there's not a big snare the tom kind of always gives the song a pre-chorus feel i guess we're about a third through but it always feels like it's building just changing that one drum from what you're used to is the big backbeat on the snare this gives it a really really unique kind of energy it's kind of like you're always building Progression moves quite a lot. Love that it's not just a really teethy kind of bass tone. Normally what I hear when I listen to punk, it's P bass, tone knob wide open. You hear a lot of that pick scrape and attack, which feeds into the energy of the song. This is more of a subdued uh, not calling this a ballad, but it has almost the production, the sensibility of one and the gentleness of the instruments. So that progression certainly isn't completely square, kind of has like an A, B and like a tag with a different hold on the five or something. So it kind of has some variation across it. But generally, E kind of has a one, six, four, five feel, but it's not exactly lining up that way. So... kind of goes up to the four again. So if we're an E, then that B gets thrown in every now and then, which is the five, and it usually goes back to the E. He's doing some really classic, really good moves here in what I call how to make a longer chord have more movement. So this is kind of a fork in the road for a lot of bass players. When you have a long chord, let's say we're holding on an E. Well, there's a zillion ways you can go about playing bass over a chord. You can play whole notes. You can just drive eighth notes. But let's say you want to give a little more movement to it. And what I'm about to say is what gives the song that kind of bouncy, fun, just drive. You can circle around the root note, hit it every once in a while, maybe on a downbeat to establish where we are, but you can move a lot around it, but just make sure you come back to that root very regularly and just dance around it. So instead of going... Maybe you could add some space and just stay on the root. Or you can do what Peter's doing. Paul, gosh, I messed that up. Paul Simonen. Simonen. Somebody please tell me how to pronounce this. He's cursed with a, a tough last name pronunciation. I am too. Michelle. It looks like Mitchell. I've seen it spelled a million different ways. My last name is Michelle, so I feel the pain. I'm going to say Simonon. I don't know. Sorry I said Peter. It's Paul. I'm reading here. But... He's going down to the six and the five. So you suddenly took this really kind of simple chord progression. One, six, four, five. But he's making it move in a way that doesn't feel like every other song in one, six, four, five. One, six, four, five is just a very common progression. So this is essentially that, but there's ways to make it sound different and differentiate it from that. And the way he's kind of tying all those chords together, using that simple act of dancing around the root is what gives this its really cool bounce. And it doesn't have the semblance of like a pop song. It's kind of in their own style. And just something I really noticed. Really cool. Of course, he's driving that note. You hear this last phrase here. Here we go. He straightened up as soon as I said all that. Kind of gives it just like a feel of it wants to get off the chord and you're just kind of patiently waiting. This adds some tension. It's like, where are we going next? Instead of just going, you know, you could ride there all day. This gives it a sense of 
where are we going? Simple stuff like that. There it was. Okay, so he strings it up here. the gallops now now that more of the band is in there's more layers here it's even harder to discern the separation on those gallops i only hear it because i feel like i can hear a little bit of pick attack kind of creeping through here but palm muting having a softer tone maybe he's using a softer pick but i love the gentleness because gallops on bass are can easily be too much you got to really subdue them and bring them back <laughs> kind of thing. So I love the dynamics. I'm all lost in the supermarket. I can no longer shop happily. Ooh. Listen to the space he's adding there. He wasn't closing it up quite that much earlier. Like this is kind of a fast tempo dun to dun to dun at least for 16ths in a gallop format, but he's adding a little bit of space between one and the E, a uh, one and a two and a three. So in that E, he's resting. So instead of da 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 da, it's da 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 da. Little breath in there. You got to really sync up both hands to get that feel in right. Listen to that. I can no longer shop happily. I came in here for the special offer. Subtle stuff like that is what makes the bass sing in a song. Such a smooth production and mix. Love the guitar coming in on the left channel. I guess that'd be left for you. Okay, he's done this move a lot too, which I find really um, sounds like this was intentional where he goes up and catches that drum hit that kind of just spikes out of nowhere. It's almost like a police kind of Stuart Copeland thing drum-wise. Just, just kind of the way it sounds. Maybe it's the drum sound. Maybe it's that... It's so open, and those hits are just really big. They just like really stab out. But I notice he kind of abandons his typical range of being here. And he only goes up higher when it's time to hit with that drum hit, which is just a perfect meeting and matching of the rhythm section. So that kind of thing. And then he goes. Goes up to that three, but he's not really up in this range too much in this part. So I love that he abandons this normal range, kind of on the E and the A strings, and it goes back down to the that kind of thing. Little funky chromatic thing on the end here. That's almost chromatically uncomfortable. That that's an interesting thing to inject after kind of square uh, diatonic playing this whole time, but I like it. It's just it's a little bit of like, huh? Very cool. See how much impact the bass has, y'all? Adding that one little chromatic thing, it just, that's just like I'm a, a highlight in the song that I haven't heard. Little things that jump out and get your attention. And it's nothing crazy, it's just a cool idea, you know?
always the fade out. You get the cool stuff. Hear him going up higher there. We'll never know. I think from the few songs by The Clash I've heard, I don't remember any of them sounding quite this dynamic and mellow. And this was a cool side of the band. Again, it's another one of many bands I need to go back and rediscover. So thank you for requesting them. But I think my takeaway from this is that this guy is a master at adding space in a bass line and it being so effective in the way the song flows. It, you know, it's, it's weird to say that what he's not playing is responsible for the way the song feels just as much as what he is playing. And he didn't have a ton of room to get super adventurous, which is why you hear that chromatic thing kind of tacked on at the end. And if you listen really closely during that fade out, that's when he starts to venture out. And that's a thing you hear a lot. The song's over. What's said is what's said and needs to be said. And then it's time for the bass player to let loose. But during the song, it's about serving the song. But I feel like he pushed his limits on space, the adventurous nature of aligning with the drums and the rhythm section. But it's the subtle stuff that makes those songs have that in factor of like, why does it feel good to listen to? And it's something as simple as taking a gallop on this E and removing a little bit of the note length on the first note. This is kind of straight, right? So he just shortened that first note and went versus, I mean, completely different sound. Such a small thing, just letting the fretting finger up just early enough to choke the note off. And I know it was intentional because there were other sections of the songs that didn't do that. But wow, that was a really warm, cool, refreshing P bass tone to hear. It was a little bit more subtle. I almost feel like I'm listening to more of a Motown era P bass tone. You know, it's just soft and subdued and really warm. So I'm interested to explore more British punk bands here on the channel. Let me know in the comments who I should go to next because I'm very curious to draw a comparison, compare the scenes geographically. But thank you guys for requesting Lost in the Supermarket. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you hanging with me. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can come find us on patreon.com slash lowenduniversity. I'm doing full album reactions and tons of lesson content and such over there. And that's all I've got for today. I love you all. Cheers. We'll see you next time.